Good evening and welcome to this March 8th edition of Off The Map Live. I am your host, Ben Licata. This show is going to be a good one. Uh, we've got in-house um, Phil Robertson and special guest host interviewer Frank Reddy. And uh, via Skype, illustrator extraordinaire Tony Moore. Uh, I'm sure you've seen his work if you're a comic book fan. Um, if you haven't seen his work, then you're not really a fan. Um, this show would not be possible without our friends at Neotat. Neotat is one of our oh, sponsors, one of our best sponsors. Um, they have been supporting the show since the beginning, and um, they are makers of fine linear rotary tattoo machines. Uh, you can run them over with a truck, and they won't break. Um, if it does break for any ridiculous reason, give it back to Ray. He'll fix it up. It'll be better than new. Um, also brought to you by the Paradise Artist Retreat, which will be here later this month. I'm looking forward to going to it. Um, if you haven't got a ticket and you want to go to this, there's about mm, a dozen, maybe 20 at the most left. Uh, you're going to want to buy one as soon as possible. Uh, if you, for some reason, can't make it to New Mexico, we have uh, recently started selling live stream tickets. So you can watch them from the comfort of your home studio. You can get together with your artist friends, uh, buy a live stream ticket, and see all of the uh, seminars and discussion panels and beam them right into your space. It'll be amazing. We're also brought to you by the Worldwide Tattoo Conference. The next Worldwide Tattoo Conference will be held in Portland uh, this October. We recently held the Worldwide Tattoo Conference in Venice, Italy. It was an amazing experience. Um, if you want to take your tattooing to the next level, this is somewhere that you need to be. Those tickets are on sale now at WorldwideTattooConference.com. Uh, get one. They're going fast. And last but not least, um, we are sponsored by Off The Map Tattoo. Off The Map Tattoo is, um, well, one of the best tattoo shops in the entire world. We've got locations here in East Hampton, uh, Oregon, and Italy. Um, the reason we do this show is Off The Map. That's why we are Off The Map Live. Last episode, if you caught it, was our Paradise Artist Retreat um, extravaganza, as Gabe Ripley would like to say. We had Pepper, Guy Hutchison, Ian McCown, Damon Conklin, Dan Marshall, Chet Czar, and Tony Morse uh, kind of snuck in there a little bit. Um, if you missed it, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel. It's there. Uh, we also offer it as a video podcast on the uh, Apple Podcast Store for free. Um, our next episode will be in probably about a month because uh, our, uh, in two weeks from now, our gear will be on its way to New Mexico. And on our next episode, we'll be talking with Turk from Left Hand Black. Uh, that's going to be an exciting show for sure. So stick around. Right after this commercial, we'll be back with Phil Robertson and uh, more amazing stuff for you. Uh, we'll see you on the other side of this. We're at a really pivotal point right now where we can all make a, a leap forward. In the modern age, uh, that's where the floodgates of tattooing has opened up. And every young kid wants to be grow up and be a tattooer. You limit yourself and think, oh, I can't afford that, or I'm not good enough, or just sort of be introspective about the ways that your fears and your insecurities get triggered. Um, there's a lot of talent coming in, and if you want to make money, and if you want to be a part of, and if you want the respect of your comrades in this industry, you have to do everything you can do to grow. And no singular movement in the industry is more powerful at taking this creative energy and pushing it towards growth than Tattoo Now, Paradise Artist Retreats, and if you're not coming to these things, you're getting left behind. That's all there is to it. I can feel it elevating me to another place, another level of understanding. I keep thinking the word retreat. It is a, an artist's retreat. And just by definition of the word to retreat or pull back from the front lines of your life and everything that you're doing, the busyness, and, and to literally calm myself. I really love being around serious artists and the artists that are here are all of them serious artists and so 
when you get a hundred serious artists together, it creates a special kind of energy. I'm so honored to uh, be invited and um, such incredible people and such a high caliber of artists that are here because you've got people that are practicing their art every day. I'm so busy all the time and I do work every day and I paint as much as I can at home. But to be in a space with other people doing it um, in, a, in, a, in a place that's beautiful like this. Painters get inspired, artists get inspired. Yeah, if you don't do anything else, in the year, then just go to one of these events. It's just amazing. Letting all these creative juices just flow together, and uh, it's awesome. I've never experienced anything like this. It's, uh, it gives me hope for the future. Whenever you're surrounded by this much talent, and, and productive talent, like people who are taking their talent and making lots of artwork, um, you, you bring inspiration and ideas. Working with all these great artists, you feed off feed up the energy. In just four days of being here, I find myself being able to apply different, different artists' techniques. I feel super honored to be here participating in the retreat amongst the, the world's greatest. Everyone is putting out amazing work. I, if I had the money, I would buy everything on the floor. And as being visual people like we are artists, all you have to do is see them. You know, you see what someone else is doing and it affects you. So, I mean, no price is too much for to go home change. You need to be here. Come join us. And we're back with the always handsome Phil Robertson. Phil, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, so you are doing a guest spot at Off the Map East Hampton currently? Yes. Uh, not your first trip out here? No, that's my third trip. Last uh, time I was out here was 2008 or so. How do you like uh, East Hampton? East Hampton's awesome. Very cool town. What keeps you coming back to East Hampton? Uh, really, really, really good clients and... Uh, just like like-minded in individuals hanging out and doing tattoos, getting tattoos, and making art. Off the map treats you well. Oh, definitely. So One of the best shops in the world. You are uh, located in Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland, Ohio. How long have you been there? Uh, since I was born, I was born in 1980. So <laughs> August. 13th. Never left. Ah, uh, no. Oh no, I moved to Columbus for a little while. All Maybe the way, like all the way years. to Columbus. Yeah, two hours away. It was like two hours south. So we're driving work, back and forth. Where are you working these days? I'm at Classic Tattoo and uh, Reserve Tattoo in downtown Cleveland. So who are some of the folks that you've been working with out there? Uh, one of my homies, uh, Alan Garcia. Sick artist. I don't know if... I don't, he doesn't publish too much, but he's very, very awesome tattooer. We've been working together since we were probably about, say, 19 years old. Really, really good tattooer. Uh, Mark Warnick I work with. Sick, uh, just like old school, traditional, very clean tattoos, and just some awesome dudes that I work with in Cleveland. So you tattoo mainly in bioorganic, biomechanical, would you say, your genre? Uh, I mean, that's what, for like a, a lot, lot of, of, what, lot of what you yeah, post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm still saying. tattoo. I'm a dad, you know. It's still like, you know, after a certain point, it's still like, we're tattooers, you know. We, you can do art and like sell, sell paintings, but not make as much money. Or we're just tattooers, you know. I'll do whatever. Yeah. You know. So you still, still you stay as long as it's a good tattoo or design wise, you know. You still do walk-in stuff. Yeah. 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 What kind of stuff are people asking for out in Cleveland? Uh, arrows and infinity knots and stuff like that. You know, yeah. anywhere that's what they ask sure. for. You know, right now. Well, uh, so what do you most uh, like like to tattoo? Where, where would you? The direction of tattooing, where, where, what, what are you most comfortable with? I uh, just, you know, bio-organic, turning people into like uh, alien type stuff, you know. What, uh, what do you enjoy about that, that style? Why do you think that's, a, that's an important uh, style of tattooing? Uh, it just looks cool, you know. 
You see Shit, people attached to like, like Paco Deeds or you see body suits from that guy. It's, it's amazing, you know. Uh, guy Jason just recently posted a back piece. Oh, yes. That's on my and buddy it, uh, Ron Collins. And it just totally it changed fucking the shape amazing. of what this guy looks it like. It is fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you enjoy doing that to people? Yeah. I've actually tattooed that guy, too. Oh, uh, yeah. That guy's got a sick collection going. So as you mentioned, you're also a parent? Yes. I'm a, uh, well, fairly recent. Yeah. My daughter is 14 months old. Uh, Rosalie. Has uh, has being a tattooer and being a parent been a difficult combination for you? Uh, no, it's mainly being a parent. Tattooing's been like put on the back burner for a little bit. You know, I, I tattoo like three days a week. Uh, it's just hard, you know. You enjoy being a dad? Oh, I love it. I would never change anything, you know. But yeah, it's awesome. Have you? Uh, do you ever? Do you ever uh, do any uh, artwork with her? Uh, digital stuff. I can't really. Uh, you know, paint with solvents and stuff right now. You know, she eat that stuff and call poison control. And, <laughs> yeah, you want, we're not. Tr- we're trying to avoid all that stuff. So, so I work with a uh, Wacom, uh, Big Cintiq, uh, like HD tablet, like cordless, like little pen thing, and it's amazing. How long have yeah. you been working with, uh, with the the Wacom tablet? Uh, like two thousand two, maybe. So what do you enjoy about it? What are, what, are, what are some of the advantages of working digital it's not as permanent. opposed to on paper? Uh, backspace. Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. No, it's just it's it's awesome. Just like digital airbrushing, you know. Do you uh, do you lay out tattoos with it? Every day. So do you bring in actual photos of clients and lay it over there? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, definitely photograph their their body, you know, and put it in, design the stuff around it, you know. Would you say it saves you time? Yeah. Crap ton. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Russ Abbott and Guy Aitchison are going to be doing a... Uh, the Wacom a, team. Like Wacom uh, yes. seminar thing at Hell City. Yeah, Hell City. You're going to be awesome. there? Uh, yeah, I have to I mean, tattoo, though. I, I mean, I know work. you already know. I have a kid. I know you already know. I've got to work it. now. now. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're going to be at Hell oh. City. Oh, definitely. Oh, right. In Wacom, yeah. Definitely. You, uh, do you often go find yourself at Hell City? Yeah. Every year, I throw it. So I tattooed with Dirk for a while. So, uh, what are some of your uh, favorite conventions to go to? Is that would that be uh, right now? I, it's very limited on my traveling, but yeah, just help cities. Do you go to Phoenix? Yes, that's pretty far from Ohio. Yeah, it's fun. What draws you to I the Phoenix show? Clients and awesome tattoos, definitely. Sweet swimming pool. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> thirteen of them. The first year I went there, I've tried to find every pool and do a cannonball into it, and I missed two. <laughs> there's like yeah, there's, yeah, a few locked, there's a few that are hidden yeah that's yes, definitely they'll lock them away I have found well, a couple by surprise awesome. late at night and I'm like holy shit there's another <laughs> pool over here too uh, this is awesome it I is love that great. show <laughs> um, so when you're designing on a Wacom yeah um, what is, what's your uh, what's your workflow like do you uh, ah, basically make, I'll, I'll photograph the guy's arm figure out what nowadays it's like what I have to cover up you do a lot of cover-ups? Crap tons right now. Why do you think that is? People are actually seeing what good tattoos are? Yeah, and people are cheap. They don't want to get lasered, I guess. Well, laser's mm-hmm. painful from what I hear. I've been lasered a lot. and uh, So you don't have it's any... It's totally worth it. I think you have no sympathy? No, hell no. Anytime I'm like, hey, man, you should get that. Let's, let's start with getting that laser. I'm like, ah, I don't know. I heard it hurts. I'm like, it doesn't hurt at all. You should totally get it. I suggest everyone gets lasered. Yeah. So, uh... It... What kind of stuff are you covering up? You covering up like recent tattoos that were mistakes? Uh, gay or like... tattoos. I got when I was in prison. Oh yeah. No, actually, no. Uh, just stupid shit. When He's I was hard. <laughs> yeah. Can't right. you tell? Yeah. Right. No, I mean, what, uh, kind of, what kind of stuff are people coming to you uh, with these days? Oh, to get covered up? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the older guys with stuff they got when they, like nineteen eighties. Older, fifty years old. And they just want to get sleeves now. You. Know? I want to get biometrics. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's how they come in. Yeah, <laughs> well, right on. And uh, I like you, Iron Maiden too, bro. <laughs> do you, do you collaborate with your clients, or do definitely, you, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. I get, I show them, uh, you know, websites and all that stuff that they should look through and figure out what they want to do. You know. So what's what's some of your favorite stuff that you uh, you've done recently? I can add in images later, so hopefully like, you'll tell me something good. Yeah, like robot tattoo stuff. I don't know. Robot? Like straight up mech? Yeah, robo mech stuff. I've mean, been like, doing a bunch like of cool stuff. Robocop? Like, 
<laughs> Japanese <laughs> manga, like some uh, Japan Omek. Yeah, yeah. yeah Do any of that stuff? I've been messing around with that stuff a while and, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got some cool stuff. I just need to upload it. Yeah, you definitely need to. We need to see more of that. Yes. So when's the last time you painted something? I saw you posted some uh, older acrylics the other day. And have you painted since you uh, have become a father? Oh, uh, just digitally. Just yeah. digitally. Yeah. Just wait. Do you do prints? Can people buy prints of that stuff? Yeah, you can. Yeah. 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 Uh, if they wanted just to, just have to contact me and where would they get them made. How would they uh, contact you? Uh, PhilRobertsonTattoos.com. Right on. PhilRobertsonTattoos.com. Find him. Um, what's your booking like? And uh, if someone's looking to get an appointment, is that uh, uh, best yeah. way? Uh, find me a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Bring a babysitter. Uh, I, I work weekends and uh, more dad during the week. You know. It's you enjoy it though. Oh, so I it's love a good it. thing. Yes. yes yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Can I have more kids? No. Can I have? A, really? Does your wife? I'm want old that? man. Look at this. Great as hell. He's not Falling. as old. He's not that old. He yeah, just right. went gray early. He's only 22. <laughs> yeah, I've been tattooing three years, and uh, I love it. It's awesome. Yeah, how does it feel to be a new guy in the tattooing? Ah, pretty good, man. Like, there's so many DVDs going around, and it's, it's so easy to learn. <laughs> TattooNow.com. We will not teach you how to tattoo if you do not know how to tattoo. Uh, but TattooEducation.com. They will also not teach you how to tattoo if you don't know how to tattoo. We provide <laughs> educational materials for professional tattooers. Don't let Phil Robertson lead you astray. We will check if you order anything. Believe me, I've called many shops to find out if you actually tattoo. And if you tattoo in a barber shop or in a gym, you're out of luck. I'm sorry. We'll try again. Catch up to me when uh, after your apprenticeship is over. <laughs> How do you feel about the proliferation of tattooing these days? It's, it's on when TV, you, it's in magazines, it's everywhere. It's uh, know, it's nice. Like the first time, I wanted to get in a magazine since I was a little kid, and then I had an article, and I thought it was the coolest shit ever. But now there's, you know, like I mean, it's in fashion now. magazines. It's it's tattoo insane. magazines are still great. I love them. But I mean, I think tattooing it's good is, for is the industry and all that stuff. But it still makes people like certain people that shouldn't get tattooed are getting tattooed. You, know. you think there are people that should not get tattooed? Yeah, definitely. You don't yeah. think everyone should? Hell no. You gotta earn that stuff. Do you feel I like think. do you feel like tattooing has kind of lost its edge a little bit as far as you know it used to be an outsider kind of rebellious thing to do? Do you think that it's gotten a little soft because every every uh, you know housewife in Middle America can get can get a tattoo now? I don't. Know. It's good for for tattooing, I guess. Sure, yeah, definitely. It's, I think so. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> How do you feel about all the, the the television shows? Do you watch them? Uh, this guy uh, that I looked up to for ever. His name's Clean Rock One. Like, He's yeah, he was on. Badass <laughs> man. Damn. That dude's a fucking badass. So I had to watch this past like episode. Of course. Or last season. You seen his van? And uh, yeah, fucking yeah. Van. Well, he was, yeah, he's got a car club and all that stuff, and he's a badass. Yeah, I had to watch it. Like, I got robbed, you know. <laughs> but uh, I just think it's stupid where I don't know that was more uh, anything that's cool you should have it more like WWF style like oh I'm gonna, I'm gonna sweep the floor with your ass you know yeah like, I've seen that go down too next tattoo episode <laughs> you know. yeah or the Randy but, Macho Man yeah, Savage yeah that'd be hilarious or just not do it you know it's just kind of ruining the industry I think it's making every fucking asshole that comes into the studio I don't mean to not talk shit but uh Think that they they have to have a uh, a story behind their goddamn tattoo. Sure. It's like no, just get tattooed because you want art. You know, like, tattoos. I mean, tattoos with stories that have their place. You know, there are memorial do, tattoos and what you know that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, but don't like get but, too in depth with that stuff. Just get tattooed. Do you find that people that come like, people that come into the shop are uh, a little bit more of an expert? They think they're more of an at expert our studio, these days. These days they come in and they seem to know. Like no, no, no. The shading's got to be this way and the line work has to be this way. No, at our studio, TV, like you come in. and... You look at the portfolios and you just figure figure out who you want tattooed by, and that's the style of tattoo you want, and you get the tattoo. And you right know, on. If you're an asshole, you come in and you're real picky. They just don't book you. You know. That's good. That's like old school. That's the way it should, should that's be. That's the way it you should know? be. I that's, guess. Good. That's, that's, that's good. Can't so, you? I don't know. Like I'm not trying to tattoo every fucking asshole on the on the planet. You know, like just a few. A, huh? Just a oh, few. Just a few. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. That's how it should be. 
So what have you got coming up? A lot up? of tattoo What have you got around. coming up in the uh, in the coming year? Uh, are you traveling I'll just at all? Being a dad. You know? Being a dad? Not right now. Maybe a com- uh, vacation next year. Maybe you and you got to the You're still going to do Hell City dad. this year? Oh, definitely. Yeah? Are you going to yeah, bring your family to you? Uh, yeah. Maybe. Don't hold him to that no, one. No, not. She's not is. tattooing or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Papa Celeste will work. You got to gotta make some dough, right? Make tattoos, at least. So you're going to find it's some time to paint? I want to see some more paintings. You Definitely. should. It's, imp- it's important. Yes, I have a lot of digital stuff. Do you find that the digital stuff has, uh, has it, like, tactile-wise, it's different? Like, uh, do you ever miss actually using a paintbrush, or do you no, enjoy more? I, I, no, I way, way more enjoy doing digital. I hate painting with brushes. <laughs> That's just hard. It's yeah, like, man, it's, like it's supposed to be hard. Yeah, but once you get comfortable with doing using a little digital pen, it's easy. They have a bunch of different tips you can buy and try those out. And right on. It's awesome. So if someone was going to get into digital stuff, uh, where would you suggest they start? Uh, I'll go to Wacom.com. I mean, did, you said you have Tablet. a giant one. Is yeah, they, uh, they I don't know. I would, I'd, I would really like to have one of those companions. You carry those around like wherever you, you bring go. Bring wherever you go. Yeah. Right on. Well, hey, thank you for talking with me. Thank it's you. It's always a pleasure. Yes. Um, Phil Robertson, check him out, philrobertsontattoos.com. Um, his work is it's amazing. It's bright. It's colorful. He's only been tattooing for six months, so uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's bound to get better. I'd say it's check him trying. out at a convention, but uh, unless you bring a babysitter, he's not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll be back right, right after this commercial. Uh, we're going to bring in Tony Moore and our guest host, Frank Reddy. Frank, are you ready? Frank Reddy? Yes, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about art and tattooing. Stick around. We'll see you on the other side. We started actually drawing like the same year together and I think within about five or six months his stuff was like you know two or three or four times better than mine and I'm like and I'm five years older and so I stopped drawing and started playing guitar I'm like <laughs> I'm not gonna compete with that. He was just messy <laughs> just lots of stuff in his room he was always taking things apart and I just remember there always being tools and pieces of things and probably dolls and stuff like that. <laughs> oh yeah, he was great. He was my makeup guy. He, and he was he's always been really macabre. You've seen him, he's angelic looking. He's still in his late 40s. He looks like a little angel. If you could get underneath all that hair and you get him to shave, you'd have a little boy face there. And he's always been very angelic. And yet there's this little <laughs> at the back of him. He doesn't have that big of a fear of death, which is nice. Most people, I think, are really afraid to die, whether they say they are or they aren't. You know, they act like they are. Maybe he does put this type of art out so he doesn't have to be, be like that, you know? Like, you know, take this, 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 this shitty day or this feeling, a shitty feeling, and put it on canvas, you know? Oh, it's gone now, now it's there. It's in the physical form. Let's have someone take it. You wanna buy it? It's yours, you know? This is Chats. This is how he sees life. This is his slant on existence. I see, sometimes I'll just, you know, watch TV and look around and it's, and I, and I think like, my artwork is the only appropriate response to this fucking insane nightmare we live in. It's so out of balance. If you see what's happening, how, how humans treat animals, how people treat the planet, treat themselves. I mean, we are part of this whole thing. We like to see ourselves separated from the concept of environment, but we are part of it. And we keep acting as if we are separated. Chet's work invites a deeper reflection and contemplation on the condition of the soul, basically. It goes back thousands of years. Hieronymus Bosch is still popular, and he was one of the originals. Part of it could be a catharsis. That's what a lot of uh, psychologists have thought horror movies did for people, you know, since movies began, is that when you see it and live it through an art form, you don't have to deal with it personally and yourself. With all types of art, but in particular dark art, people resonate with how they feel. 
when they look at something. So, I mean, not everyone's happy. Not everybody, you know, some people feel alone and isolated, and I feel like when you look at art that reflects that, you might, you know, really embrace it because it reminds you of how you feel yourself, but also that you're not alone and that spaces like that are okay to explore and that it's a, it's a human condition. Actually, those dark artists are light artists because they shed light on those things we don't want to see. It's sort of like turning a light on in a dark closet to, to show a kid that there's nothing really there, there's just nothing to be afraid of. They're not something to be afraid of, there's something to be looked at and learned from, you know. And we are back. I uh, hope you enjoyed those uh, quick commercial breaks. And I hope you enjoyed our uh, quick interview with Phil Robertson. He's a great dude, huh? We're here with Frank Reddy. How are we doing? How are you doing, Frank? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Ben? I'm good. So Frank has been a guest on the show in the past. Uh, he is a resident artist at Off the Map in East Hampton currently. And he's going to uh, kind of co-host this with me. Um, you're an avid comic book fan I do read them I enjoy everything about them every time I walk into the shop you've got a new one well uh, a uh, lot of the time a lot of the time yeah you've been working on your uh, your brush lining and whatnot so uh, mm -hmm. I know you're an enthusiast so that's why I brought you in on sweet this yeah I know it's gonna be fun and now uh, we're gonna talk with Tony Moore uh, I think he's on the line right now I I hope so you are hey Tony how, how you right? doing hi <laughs> so uh, this is Frank Frank Tony Moore. Nice to, nice to nice meet to you. Nice to virtually meet you. Yes. <laughs> How are we doing? So, uh, doing all right. For those who don't know, Tony is uh, an illustrator. He has been for many years. And uh, you do um, you do comics. Uh, what else have you done outside of comics? Uh, I've done a few album covers. And um, it's, it's mostly comics. I uh, recently did a, a, a Ubisoft uh, Assassin's Creed Unity video uh, with Rob Zombie. Uh, that was like the big um, San Diego Comic Con push for the video game last year. And uh, uh, I did some web comics for Mark Marin for his show Marin on IFC. Oh, no uh, we did Love like that show. one. Yeah, it was a blast to do. They were basically like one panel. Uh, recap comics of the of the episode so it was like uh, basically doing like a newspaper comic strip so you had which to, was a lot of fun did you have to draw mark i got to draw mark a lot uh, <laughs> uh dave anthony a few times uh andy kindler a couple times uh but yeah it was a blast and and you know a lot of the guest stars uh which was a lot of fun i was really trying to kind of you know develop those kind of mad magazine caricature muscles uh it's something i'm not like super comfortable with but it's something that i really love so i was really trying to trying to do that as much as i could in those is it a challenge trying to uh get a likeness down when you're doing it in that style yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, that's the biggest challenge for me. I mean, the you know the guys who work for like Mad Magazine are are masters of it, um, and it's just something that doesn't come incredibly naturally to me. Um, as much as I love Mad and 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 that type of stuff, like artistically, uh, 
I'm I'm much better with regular portraiture, and even then, I wouldn't say I'm like super comfortable with it. It's it's kind of painstaking and um, whatever. But caricature, uh, trying to do something that's really overt and exaggerated, um, is is a big difference. Uh, trying to retain that likeness and really push it, uh, it's it's definitely a. It, it's definitely out of my comfort zone entirely um, because I'm used to trying to um, make things a little more literal if I can. Um, but yeah, and that's funny given that I'm one of the more cartoony guys in comics. But uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, I've got a, uh, just a, a quick comment from our chat room. It says, uh, Tony, the daily sketches are really awesome. I look forward to them every day. So, oh, that's awesome. I'm glad they've enjoyed this. I, uh, yeah, I've been doing daily sketches um, every week uh, since early December, um, just as kind of regular content for my website, and uh, it's been going really well. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I've been using uh, mostly uh, Copic markers on chipboard, doing small like um, eight by eight and a half by nine inch sketches uh, with Copic markers on chipboard, and. Uh, you can go to my website and check them out. I've been uh, having a lot of fun with them, uh, learning how to use the markers. Has definitely been the primary goal for that. Uh, just trying to like lock down the technique on those. Uh, and you put them up for sale, right? Every day. Yeah, every day I put it up for sale. Uh, when I'm done with it, I chuck it up on the website, and uh, you know anybody that wants it can go grab one. I want the head wig, so I thought today it was a pretty awesome. The head wig? Oh yeah, oh. awesome. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, that one didn't last very long. I believe it. I wanted the I wanted the Reaper one that you did not too long ago. Oh, it's still sitting there. Yeah, I, I know. I still don't have any money in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> you like musical instruments? I'm willing to trade. No. Oh yeah, uh, I, I need to learn to play the ones I got. <laughs> Are you a musician? Uh, n not really. I uh, I was in band and stuff when I was in high school, and then since college I haven't played anything, but my wife got me a banjo a couple years ago for my birthday, and I've been slowly attempting to learn how to play it. I got one this last summer, and I'm terrible. I, I keep trying. I'm still terrible. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the finger picking is something that is not, um, it doesn't, I, I'm not very intuitive with it and so I've just basically been like strumming along with like John Prine songs right on. <laughs> that's, about all. that's as far as I've gotten cool. I've got, got a couple of questions um, I, I got to ask a few people uh, what they would want me to ask you if I got the chance to and I've got my own things too but um sure yeah um, you've had hugely successful ventures uh, do you feel the pressure to create equally successful work or do you feel less pressure because uh, you're in such high esteem that pretty much anything you do will most likely be successful? Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't say that anything of anything else I produce is just as likely to be successful. I mean, like, you know, I I did a book called The Exterminators at Vertigo uh, shortly after The Walking Dead, and uh, that thing got canceled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, we, we did, um, Rick Remender, who does a lot of Marvel stuff, mm -hmm. and I uh, poured about 10 years of blood, sweat, and tears into a book called Fear Agent yeah. that's uh, kind of a space opera, space western thing. And uh, it was a real uphill battle with that book for a long time. Um, and nowadays, um, science fiction and kind of cosmic adventure stuff is a lot more um, viable than it was, you know, 10, 10, 12 years ago when we were doing that book. And uh, and so, you know, we re-released it all as these big library edition omnibuses, uh, Omnibuy, and, uh, and those things that have performed really well, but, you know, the, the market just wasn't really there for sci-fi stuff when we were trying to actually do the book. I uh, feel like we were a little bit maybe ahead of the, that curve. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's when you say space opera, what exactly is a space space opera? Uh, you know, like Flash Gordon type, uh, you know, just uh, just kind of like crazy, and not like opera, like in the cl you know classical musical yeah, sure. sense or whatever. Um, but yeah, um, you know, kind of like a two thousand one type. Um, you know, it it can get pretty heady sometimes, uh, but we try to always balance it out with you know. Um, our hero 
punching some robots or something like that. <laughs> um, fun, yeah. But yeah, we had a lot of a lot of fun with that thing, and uh, you know, it wasn't an easy road. Um, but at the same time, it does grant me the confidence um, that I, you know, that I can do something, you know, that I can do good work, um, you know, because my past work has performed pretty well, and um, I think it gives editors confidence in me, um, you know, they, they see my work as, as a uh, more viable, uh, more of a commodity, or, uh, you know, I, I, I would have a harder time if I hadn't really been able to prove myself out. Um, so, you know, it does give me that confidence, and, and it's, you know, granted me the, the security to be able to take more chances, um, you know, and uh, try things that are, are maybe a little different and, you know, see how those do. That's awesome. I was a huge fan of your uh, Amory, Amory Wars covers back in the day. Oh, thanks. Yeah, man. your Mayo Denton Wolf with the flies going. It was a, I still oh, have thanks. that, and it's awesome. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's see here. Um, as an artist, do you collect art? We uh, we do a lot of conventions. Uh, my wife and I are on the road a lot, and one of our biggest ongoing expenditures, I'd say, is is art. Um, we have like different kind of stages of of art um, in our house. We have some that we just like to have in our collection that just kind of sit in FedEx boxes, and uh, <laughs> and then we have some that that end up uh, in the to be framed pile, and then we have some that are framed but yet to be hung. And then we have uh, lots that are framed all over our house. You're working on a personal museum, art, personal art collection museum. Yeah, I mean we tried to. Um, yeah, we've got uh, kind of a large room, a library room that we have uh, um, some uh, really cool um, Kurt Vonnegut pieces uh, printed by my friend Joe Petro down in Lexington, um, and uh, he he did all the printing for. Ralph Steadman and Hunter Thompson, and, uh, a lot of really cool guys, that's awesome. and uh, that's actually going to be one of my next projects, is uh, a big printmaking project with him uh, that I'm super duper excited about. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to, I got a quick question from the chat room. Um, is there any, uh, what is the least favorite thing that, uh, to draw for you uh, at conventions, etc.? Uh, somebody wants to know, you know what? I don't know. I guess what irritates you? <laughs> what do you What do you feel like you are like you, you're compelled to draw that you really just are tired of or don't like? Uh, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, one thing that I, I got a lot was, um, you know, I, I dr I've been known to draw zombies, <laughs> and uh, uh, a lot of times people would just ask me to draw a zombie, and so I would draw them as a zombie, and then that kind of developed, and over time. Over time, after you've done like 500 of them, uh, <laughs> the the novelty starts to wear a little thinner, and uh, I would <laughs> every once in a while I have people come up to a convention and say, uh, "Okay, I, this is going to sound crazy, but I've got a suggest like, okay, now listen, uh, okay, you ready? Uh, me as a zombie." <laughs> <laughs> And, and so after a while, I started to kind of feel like one of those like state fair boardwalk caricature artists. Yeah. Um, and you know, it kind of it, it over time kind of sucked the the joy of that out of it for me. Um, but you know, I, I I just kind of you know pulled back from those from doing that type of commission work for a while. And uh, and you know, I'm able to find it fun again now. But for a while, I had just kind of ridden it so hard that. Uh, that it just really wasn't fun at all. Um, other than that, uh, you know, at a convention, uh, you know, trying to draw women for me, uh, cartooning cute women is really hard because you really only have about five or six lines to draw a face. And uh, if they're not the right five or six lines, then you end up with a very fucked up face. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and it's really easy to, for for that to get, you know, for the face to get real haggard real fast. I'm good at that. And unfortunately, that's, haggard is where I excel. Like, I, I love to uh, <laughs> put a lot of lines on a face, like scars and wrinkles and, you know, make them real gnarly and stuff. So, uh, drawing pretty women is um, a really delicate process and uh, uh, it, it's, 
very stressful to me. Uh, and so I, I don't like trying to do those on the show floor under pressure. Um, and I don't do anything technical like cars or, you know, I try, try to not do robots even, but uh, uh, in, anything that's supposed to be slick or nice or whatever, when you, I, when you I, just, do, I can't do that. When you do draw cars and robots and things like that, uh, you're using references? Uh, yeah, I mean, I keep a lot of reference on hand, and also I do, um, for cars and buildings and perspective and stuff like that, I use a lot of uh, digital stuff to supplement that. Um, I, I use Google SketchUp for almost every car I draw. Uh, once I learned SketchUp, I was really... So you can move it around, it. twist it, get perspective, that kind of stuff? Is that why you're using it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. I, uh, you know, I'll... I'll, I'll Lay lay in the what they call a hidden hidden line uh, version of it, which basically is just like the comic book drawing of a car. Basically, mm -hmm. it just finds the edges and draws the line of the edges. Um, and uh, and I'll take that into into Photoshop. And then, you know, with SketchUp, you can adjust the severity of the perspective and all kinds of stuff like that. So I can kind of match it to like my natural perspective, and uh, and make it not stand out too hard and then I, I also uh, kind of cartoon with it you know so I'll lay that into my layout and print that onto the board in a in a non-repro blue which is like a you know like a 10% cyan or something like that. The tattooers and, uh, use this very similar blue pencil. <clears throat> yeah it's not quite as stark as that like kind of blueberry color that is on a tattoo stencil but yeah same, well, no, same I mean, basic well, When tattooers are sketching they use uh, the same non-repro blue. Uh, like oh okay yeah pencil. yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. But uh, but yeah, and then I you know I kind of try to incorporate tricks from from cartoonists that I uh, that I liked um, as a kid, like um, uh, Ed Roth or George Trosley that did like Cartoons Magazine, um, guys who could really put some action into into something that was as sterile as a car, um, you know, because really it's a kind of a block, uh, right. so it's hard to like make it move. Uh, but those guys knew how to do it; they could bend it a little bit. Uh, Take the uh, take the ellipsis of a tire and kind of turn it forward a little bit so it gets a little more kind of forward trajectory on it. Uh, People like that kind of took, you know took cars and twisted and blew up and oh, yeah. you know like their perspective was insane yeah. what they what he would do with a car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean he was basically caricaturing cars. Right. You know he would like you know, blow he, things up and shrink other things. He would take and, the torque you know, of a motor that you could almost see it. Twisting the car, it had so much power. Right. You know, like, yeah. yeah. You know. Like yeah, wrenching that back end forward. Exactly. And, you know, jump up. Yeah. Uh, so I try to incorporate things like that into into that blue line and cartoon over it as I'm as I'm working. And um, you know, I, I I still ink the old fashioned way with a brush and pen and um, and so you know I can keep like my natural texture and then it doesn't end up with like a sterile kind of computer line. Um, a lot of guys incorporate. Uh, SketchUp and 3D stuff in a way that is really uh, sterile and flat, and it doesn't incorporate with their actual drawings, and it sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, so just something I've really tried to avoid with that. But um, using those tools is definitely a big help when you got to draw, you know, cars or semis or motorcycles or whatever. Built buildings. Got to fucking hate drawing buildings. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then when you gotta draw, when you gotta draw, you know, six, seven panels per page for twenty pages every month, you know, like doing, you know, trying to fill those up sometimes, especially when it's got a lot of that shit in it, like it makes you just want to hang yourself. Um, <laughs> so I use those as a as a shortcut to make sure that I can actually get the work done uh, in an efficient, timely manner without wanting to. Just jump off a bridge. You say you say, save the uh, save the the main core time for you know the important things like characters and and, and whatnot. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and that it's actually like I've found that it will take layouts that I looked at previously as like the the my, my most dreaded pages because I knew they were just going to be awful to work on, uh, and it's actually turned them into my easiest pages because. It saves my brain so many cycles, you know. <laughs> so, uh, what are you working on right now? Uh, right now, I'm kind of getting uh, geared up for this uh, for the paradise uh, thing, uh, and trying to also kind of get the get the wheels turning on this printmaking project with uh, with Joe Petro. Um, like I said, he he he's worked with some of my heroes. Um, 
uh, I saw a, a split uh, split art show um, when I was in college that was half Ralph Steadman and Hunter Thompson and half Kurt Vonnegut and screen prints and uh, and it totally blew me away and uh, is one of the most influential shows I've ever ever gotten to see and, uh, and then fast forward uh, almost 20 years and I've met the guy and uh, we've become pretty good friends and, and we're excited to work on a project together um, uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun um, it's going to be kind of a, an agrarian manifesto um, kind of uh, uh, I don't know kind of uh, expressing some uh, discontent with uh, I'm calling it rural decay it's going to have a lot of the same kind of themes uh, that I'm known for um, kind of uh, crusty uh, disgusting corpses and stuff like that mixed with um, uh, some of the elements that I feel have like undercut uh, rural life um, I'm from a small town in Kentucky and uh, every time I go home I get sad because it feels like there's less of it every time I go um, uh, and and you know it's just like I, I we bought a farm here uh, where I live now and uh, and we're trying to homestead and things like that and it's it's something I want to get back to uh, just kind of being more self-sufficient and self uh, uh, reliant um, and all that stuff but I feel like uh, and by and large like the family farm and stuff like that has been you know, entirely undercut by a lot of a lot of elements. So these are all themes that I'm going to kind of explore um, in this in this print project with Joe, and uh, try to do some like, kind of um, fine art um, screen printing. Uh, this guy is amazing, and I'm really excited to learn as much as I can about the craft of, of printmaking from him, and uh, and really soak it all in. I look forward to seeing that for sure. Um, so you're going to be at Paradise, yes? Uh, I know you're going to be there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're super excited. Frank's um, going to be there, too. Way awesome. stoked about well, it. It's going to be great. Yeah, um, we'll share beers. I was going to ask, what, do you, uh, what, what exactly are you teaching at Paradise? Um, I'm doing a, a seminar on um, visual storytelling in a single image. It's basically like cover illustration mm -hmm. uh, as it pertains to comics, um, uh, which I thought was probably particularly... Um, good <laughs> for for tattoo uh related stuff uh, really given the similarities that. yeah um so yeah i'm going to kind of talk about that kind of um go over uh you know some of my techniques and some of my thought processes uh a lot of it'll be uh, more conceptualization and uh trying to examine some of the visual vocabulary because uh, i know in comics and, and in tattoos a lot, uh, you end up with the same like five or six uh, things that just get used into the ground and uh, you know trying to examine what you want to say and find new ways to say it um, efficiently you know in a single shot image that you know still carries a story um, and has some dynamics and, and storytelling and uh, action per se in it um, so yeah. And I'll also, I guess, be leading uh, one of the life drawing classes. So, yeah. Do you I, do you get a chance yeah. to do much figure drawing these days? Uh, no, no. Oh, I also want to say my wife uh, is running a really great um, marketing and um, business management uh, seminar, which is basically what she does for my business, our business. Um, she's kind of the the driving force behind anything that actually happens <laughs> with my business um, so yeah she's uh, she's gonna be leading a, a seminar on that which will be probably really informational uh, to a lot of people uh, we, you know just kinda sharing what we've learned uh, uh, kind of throughout our our years of experience here so I think her seminar uh, is gonna be uh, it's very well received but you know a lot of artists don't really have a good handle on the business aspect of what they're doing they're very focused on on creating art and don't really have yeah. an idea of you know how, how to how to handle all the other stuff so i think having her there is definitely going to be a good uh, a good experience for a lot of the folks that are there yeah i mean being married to me like she understands how to communicate with artists and and um you know i mean she's artistic herself and uh but she has a really great mind for business and how to make things work efficiently and uh and so, yeah, like I said, I, I feel like the proof's in the pudding uh, with that. I mean, she's uh, she's done really great 
uh, stuff for our business, and uh, she's excited to try to kind of help share some of those thoughts with uh, with you guys. So, I've got yeah. I've got a pretty good list of uh, questions coming in from the chat room, and we're uh, okay. I think we'll just kind of run through them. Um, they're going to be a yep. little bit uh, disjointed because you know everyone's got different ideas about what's up. So uh, I think. Uh, I know a lot of people have been dying to ask you stuff, so uh, I'm just going to kind of go back and forth with Frank, and we're going to ask you some of these questions. Um, let's see. I'm going to ask you this one. Uh, how many thumbnails do you do when you're working out a full page? Uh, one per page. <laughs> uh, what I do <laughs> is... Uh, yeah, next. Uh, no, I... Uh, I have a template that's a, basically a piece of typing paper with nine little squares on it, uh, two inches by three inches, roughly. Um, and that allows me, I, I pencil the entire page out on that little two inch by three inch thing. And that allows me to, to get basically the, the, the main thrust of the page locked down. Uh, I can put all the figures on it that I need to, but not get mired in the little shit. Uh, because any bigger than that, and like if my if my brain's not operating, I'll I'll just start wasting time drawing little things that don't need to be drawn. Uh, so I'll go through and draw every book on a bookshelf or whatever, just to like kind of kill the time uh, to like hope that uh, the the brain juices will start trickling in. Uh, so that it keeps me from doing that, uh, and I focus on just the things that need to be focused on on the layout. Uh, it's too small to do any other bullshit. So uh, <laughs> that's a good way to I force yourself that. into focusing. It's that, that. Yeah, I mean, it's the only thing I found that works. Um, <laughs> but uh, I and then I take those after the fact, uh, take those into Photoshop, and I blow them up to the the full print size. And at that point, I can kind of readjust some of the figures if they need to be bigger or smaller, uh, tweak anything out that I need to tweak. And if there's, like, you know, technical stuff like perspective grids or, or uh, 3D uh, cars or buildings or whatever bullshit else needs to be put in there, I can lay those in directly, and then I uh, print all that out in the, in the non-repro blue, and then I can kind of go in. And it, it, it also saves me a lot of time doing pencils because then I don't have to pencil so much and then I can jump right into the inks and actually get down to work. So you're just using the but, you're using the non repro blue as guideline and inking right over it and you're good to go and then you come you're finished? Uh yeah, pretty much. Uh but yeah the layout stage is the hardest part because it's the it's the most like mentally intensive part because it's where all the thinking's done. Like that's where I have to I have to see every scene in my head and uh, you know, rotate around within the scene, you know, like from camera angles, and, and and I have to picture the people, I have to hear their voices, I have to basically, you know, see how they're acting. I have to their, hear their voices and see their body language, and, uh, and kind of extrapolate all those things together, and basically have the movie in my head, and then uh, and then and then I have to like you know grab like the the highlight frame and stick that in a panel and then grab another one from another scene and stick that in the panel. And so that's the the more that's the really the most uh mentally exhausting part of the entire process uh which at the end of it I have nothing to show my editors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're, so they're like, "Hey, how are those pages coming? It's been about a week and a half." And I'm like, "Yeah, I uh I, I have the entire book laid out. Nice. I have the book laid out, but I have nothing that I can actually turn in." that makes you guys feel it more more at ease. Uh, I have nothing that I can give the colorist yet uh, or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, it seems uh, to be working out okay for you. Yeah, your job is way harder than mine. <laughs> um, who are your favorite comic book characters? Like your own personal favorite? Um, I, I like... Uh, I love westerns. I love uh, guys like Jonah Hex and Blueberry. Um, uh, I love uh, like war comics. I love Sergeant Rock. I love The Losers. I love uh, The Haunted Tank is one of my favorites. Um, I also love all, all, all kinds of monsters. Um, you know, I like superheroes. Like they're fun, but they're not like my uh, bread and butter. And they're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're not. But they're. The vast minority of my collection 
as as much as I love comics, I, can, I have relatively few superhero comics. Uh, I read a shit ton of stuff like that in the 90s when I was a kid. Um, I loved the X-Men and X-Factor and X-Force and X-Fucking whatever else. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, like, as I got older, I got more into, like, indie stuff and uh, underground and... Um, and then that kind of led me into European stuff, and uh, and so um, now that's it's it's really a, a, like a, a scant fraction of the stuff that I read and I get into. Sweet. All right. Um, Ustreamer eight nine seven two one wants to know who wins, Howard the Duck or Destroyer Duck. Mm, Lobo the Duck. <laughs> a win. Howard the Duck's lame. Oh, I love I love Howard the Duck. He's great. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, vast, he's, he's kind of, vastly underrated. If, if I ever met him, I'd want to just kind of punch him in the beak. You know. <laughs> I think that's his. That's, he's so that's obnoxious. His <laughs> that's his that's, that's. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh, I was gonna say I can't even say that. Kendall Swafford five. Sure. Uh, any temptation to go digital, as if you don't already? Um, yeah. I mean, as far as like uh, the actual um, end product, I think I think digital is kind of the wave of the future. Um, you know, print is print's awesome. I love I love the feel of a comic book. I like you know being able to uh, flip the pages. I like smelling the glue in an old book. I like all that stuff. Uh, but also, in this day and age, like, you know, a long time ago when uh, MP3s were hitting and everybody was up in arms about, like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not vinyl. It's like, yeah, it's not vinyl. It's not CDs or whatever else. But I also don't want to have a thousand of those fucking things taking up every square inch of my house. Um, I don't know, man. And I that's, love that. You know, like, I mean, I, I like to keep, like, some special things for myself. Right. But uh, largely, I'm just as happy to have the content without the form. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't necessarily need, like, that physical artifact every time. Right. Um, um, and, and comics, I think, are largely like that. I, um, you know, and, and I think the vast majority of the reading audience, especially modern reading audiences, feel that way, too. The, they're just as happy to have... Um, if they can read it, they just want it in their well, eyeballs. I mean, you, can, you can have the entire have entire comic book collection right here. You know, like exactly, yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, you can't take a. I mean, you could take a long box into the bathroom with you every time, but or you could I take do that. Sometimes, but... <laughs> uh, my wife actually bought me a spinner rack for for Christmas. That was my plan was to have a spinner rack next to my toilet. That's awesome. Um, wow. But. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of information there that they may not have anticipated. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think um, you know, digital digital is also a different medium entirely. So I think uh, you know, when new content is created that is tailored specifically to that medium, as it stands right now, I feel like most digital comics are print comics that were kind of cut up and shoehorned into a digital format, um, which sometimes sometimes it is is good but a lot of times it's like it's like looking at uh uh you know it's it's like reading it through a viewfinder like you only get to see a little bit of it at a time you know right. like one panel at a time you don't get to experience the whole page um you know which which kind of robs it of of you know some of what it's meant to be um but i think you know as as time goes on when new new uh content is is more tailored to the medium. Uh, I think new storytelling techniques will start to come out that'll uh, be really cool. And I don't think it necessarily has to be about adding animation or music or any of that type of kind of hokey bullshit over top of it. Like it can still be just solid uh, comic book storytelling techniques uh, just applied to a digital medium in a way that's meant for a digital medium. Um, you know where you. I think comics, uh, you know, it's all about uh, you, you tell the story, but like also, you know, with page layouts, uh, like panels, uh, one thing I do is if, if I want something to have a little more room to breathe or the reader to spend a little more time on it, I make it bigger. 
uh, just so you know, because it demands more of your attention. And then something that I want to be kind of chop, 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 and move through real quickly, um, I make them small. You can do things like that in digital, um, and you could potentially do things that kind of fuck with your reader's ability to take things at their own pace. I mean, comics is meant to be, I mean, at its base, is reading is something that is very personal, and each person can take it at their own pace. But you, as the content creator, can kind of uh, dick with them a little bit and force them into your storytelling uh, in ways beyond adding, you know, like adding music or animation or something like that. Uh, like they have, to, they have to wait until that thing is played out, or they'll cut it off or whatever. Right. Uh, but if you do something simple, like just repeat the same panel a few times because you want it to linger, um, you know, you can do that on a printed page uh, to an extent, but if you r really do it too much, it becomes just kind of wasteful because you really only have so much paper in a book. Right. Uh, and so, but digital, uh, you know, it's just a couple extra K. Which uh, is, yeah, which is awesome. A couple more files in there. <laughs> yeah, Stick with them all day. Uh, you can do all kind of, you can actually surprise people in that way. Uh, in a comic book, you can't really surprise people that much. They turn the page, if they've seen it, or if it's on, if, if the best you can hope for is to put it on a left hand page so that they're surprised when they turn to that page right mm -hmm. uh, because it's on the right hand page when they get to that you know that other page they've already they've already ruined the surprise they've already seen it yeah, I read them like uh, this. That's yeah <laughs> and so you know yeah there's yeah there's lots of uh you know there's things that people can do now and I think uh you know, as the as that medium is kind of explored a little more, and, and the the content is made for that medium, uh, like I said, new storytelling techniques and cooler types of uh, ways to tell stories will start to emerge, and and I'm super excited about it. I uh, I'd like to do more of it myself, uh, and uh, and I'm excited to see what everyone else comes up with too. Do you uh, you have any plans to do uh, any kind of uh, downloadable kind of instructional videos or? Uh you know, that's something. Uh, like that? Yeah, that's something my wife and I have talked a lot about uh, recently. Um, tutorials and just kind of, uh, you know, kind of logging process and stuff like that. Um, uh, just kind of exploring different techniques, like you know, maybe just spend uh, a couple hours, like, hey, get to know your brush, uh, things like that. Um, I mean, you could do. Uh, I, you know, I think that type of stuff. You really. You're doing useful. daily. You're doing daily sketches anyway. If you had, you know, a GoPro set up and you were kind of talking through your process, you could do daily, mm -hmm. daily tips and tricks with Tony. You know, like every day, kind of be like, "Well, this is what I do when I'm making this, or this is what I do with this." And have you ever thought about doing anything yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like probably my day-to-day -day process would get pretty uh, repetitive, but uh, <laughs> I could definitely like, find a, an aspect of something to focus on, uh, you know, on a regular basis and, and just kind of uh, exhaust talking about that, you know, for one, like, you know, one big shot of, you know, like, okay, today we're going to talk about how to ink with a brush or here we're going to talk about how to do whatever thing it is that, you know, and, and just try to, uh, you know, give like a thorough investigation of that aspect or whatever. What types of tools are you using when you're inking? Uh, do you use brush pens? Do you use actual brushes? Uh, depends on the job. Um, a lot of times if I'm on the go or it's uh, something where I'm not really too worried about, uh, you know, what, what it is. Uh, I have a, a Pentel brush pen that I use. It's basically a little... Um, let me see. I might I might have it within arm's reach here. Uh, yeah, uh, I got this guy here. It's a. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Hold it in a place where you can actually see it. Uh, <laughs> it's got a little synthetic brush on the end of it. There you um, go. And then the uh, the end of it screws off here, and it has a little replaceable ink cartridge. Uh, and this is really cool because I can, you know, I can cap it just like a regular pen, keep it in my pocket, uh, take it on the go with me, uh, and it's really awesome. And uh, you know, what the bitch is, these cartridges don't last all that long, but uh, the plus side is 
it's a continuously fed cartridge, so you're always getting ink fed into your brush. So you don't have to stop every three or four brush strokes and dip it again and twist the point back out and wring out the excess and all the horse shit that goes with a, an actual pen. You just keep on working until your thing's dead, and then you, you know, chuck it and get a new one. Uh, <laughs> I like that thing a lot. Um, but at the same time, it's a different experience. The brush is not quite as... Um, nuanced as an actual like a real good brush um my favorite go-to actual brush i don't have on hand here but it's a uh, Raphael 8404 watercolor brush uh, kalinsky sable brush and they are awesome they are uh, super razor thin points with a nice fat ass end of it where it holds a lot of ink right next to the ferrule and uh, and you can I mean it's like a magic wand. The thing's amazing. Um, I use the hell out of them. You familiar uh, with that? They are I'm familiar with the parts of a brush. That, that brush. brush no. <laughs> can you repeat it's what that si was? It's similar to a, like a Windsor Newton Series like Seven, but it's a it's a it's the Raphael Kalinsky eighty four oh four. It's a, I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, it's the best brush I've ever used, and, and it's probably the only brush I will use until I die. I, I'll, I'll, I'll always buy them. I think you just awesome. I think you just sold a you sold a lot of brushes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're fantastic brushes and amazing. I mean, like they hold up to all kinds of abuse. I've uh, just absolutely ruined mine a few times. You know, you get going sometimes, and you want to get like a little dry brush or a little scrubby. And you start to kind of rub it into the paper and, and fuck them up a little break bit. Break all the filaments. It, yeah, well, yeah, they all start to kind of spread out, you yeah. know. And, uh, and then I take this thing. I uh, one thing I do is I take a little bit of Windex, uh, warm it up in the microwave a little bit, and let it soak in there. And it draws all the ink. Any ink that gets stuck up in the ferrule uh, kind of pulls that out. And then I, uh, uh, use, it, it's hair, so I just use shampoo and conditioner. Put some like nice conditioner that I would use on my little, luxurious little Pantene and, uh, on your brush. You know? Yeah, no, totally, yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, put that on there, let it sit, uh, sculpt it to a point, let it dry in there, let it sit there for a long time, uh, and then uh, and then rinse that out. It's it's like brand new again. I've I've brought one back from the dead like five or six times, uh, where like a cheaper brush, you maybe get once doing that, and then it's just fucked for good. Um, uh, but yeah, no, it's it's awesome. They 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 take a hell of a lot of, bu of abuse. They snap nicely. The point, you know, they don't end up getting kind of warped into that hook-shaped point. Um, yeah. No, they're awesome. Yeah, I, I totally love them. That's badass. Um, and then I also use, um, I use a lot of pigment liners. Uh, Microns are kind of a go-to. Uh, I really like the Zig Millennium pigment liners. Um, same basic premise as a Micron. Uh, I usually don't go any smaller than a... a I think as an O2 is usually the smallest I go. Mm -hmm. um, any smaller than that, it's just kind of uh, jerking off, really. I mean, I don't <laughs> Too know. Too much detail. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. How? Yeah, I don't need to draw like every nose hair and blackhead on. So, I mean, as much as I love to do that type of shit, it's not really something I need to. Get <laughs> not really conducive head. to making good production work either. You know, you can spend way yeah, too much time. Exactly. Yeah, well, you get smaller, and the and then you end up spending half your time fighting your tools. You know, like the smaller nibs on on a pigment liner, uh, that little that little bendy black part uh, will either split or bend, or it'll retreat. The best case you can hope for is that it'll it'll retreat down into that little metal ferrule, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you get it a little bit longer. But <laughs> either way, it's it's got a really limited uh, life, and then it's and then you just you know got to brick it, but. Uh, but yeah, those are basically my main go-to uh, tools. Like I said, and uh, I use a lot of uh, Yasutomo water, uh, water-soluble, um, the non-toxic uh, Sumi ink. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm a, I'm a real dumbass about cleaning out my brushes. I, 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 <laughs> so I buy those. Water-soluble nice is an important <laughs> aspect for for the inks you use. Yeah, I buy, I buy that nice expensive brush, and then I don't clean it. Mm -hmm. um, idiot. Yeah. And, uh, I'm so yeah, I'll, yeah, all the way through. But the uh, the the Yasutomo, um, the Sumi ink, the water, the uh, um, the non toxic kind doesn't have shellac in it, so it doesn't turn to plastic in your brush, and it doesn't break the hairs in your brush. Mm -hmm. uh, you get it wet, and it just turns back into ink. Um, uh, shellac, and you, all you need is a little denatured alcohol that that'll be completely. 
resolved, gone. You won't, won't be a problem. Yeah. If you know? haven't, real easy. If you have up your brush <laughs> before then, um, <laughs> right? But yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, most people don't really keep denatured alcohol around either. I'd, and also, I I uh, I point my brush with my my mouth. Ah, uh, yeah. And I don't I don't need to eat that shit. So I uh, yeah. I, uh, the, first, <laughs> the first time I saw Frank doing that, I was like, "What the hell are you doing, man?" He's like, "What? This is what I do. Point. He's pointing his brush. That's how I water color. It's in I the, eat you know, so much ink. It's, it's in the ink. It's on the page. It's in his mouth. It's in the ink. It's on the page. It's in his mouth. I'm like, you gotta stop doing that, man. Digital's like, probably you know, saved my life. I get, like, I get that black uh, little streak down. <laughs> right. Yeah, him too. Yeah, it's whatever color I'm using. It's all over the place. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I try, I try to stick with stuff that's not going to put me in an early grave. Um, that's good. As far as supplies go, <laughs> I should do more research. I don't know. <laughs> um, all right, you streamer fifty six seventy seven. Uh, they'd like to know what you do to challenge yourself as an artist. Um, you know, I mean, some it just depends on um, you know where I'm at. Uh, it, a lot of times, it's just about being in the right headspace. Um, so, you know, sometimes a challenge might just be something as simple as like, okay, I got six hours to finish this eight-hour page. Let's see if I can do it and not hate it when it's over. Uh, you know, if I can produce a page that I still don't mind having my name on, uh, that's often a, a, a big victory. Um, but, uh, you know, also, uh, you know, trying to like recognize, you know, really examine your work and... Uh, you know, recognize these kind of crutch moves that you know maybe don't necessarily work, but you uh, let's, uh, look. I w okay. One thing I find is a lot of times, if some shit's not working, if I'm not getting the contrast I want out of it, I'll pop a an outline around it, like a like a white like a sticker outline on it, and it's a dog shit move as far as I really think. You uh, know, I, I'm, you know, it, tattooers have been doing actually, that lately too, and I I think it's a dog shit move there too. But what? all right, carry on. Um, you know, because yeah, it's a it's a it's a fake contrast. Uh, it flattens your image. It makes it look like a decal. Uh, you know, versus actually getting some real contrast, like right. having a real contrast of a background and foreground, yeah, something that actually key. pops it. It's a crutch. It's yeah. a totally crutch move, and uh, I do it sometimes, and I hate <laughs> that I do it sometimes, and I recognize it. Uh, and so I try I try to really fight it. Um, you know, I mean, shit. You look at my sketches, my day sketch of the day sketches. I've done it a fuck ton of times, and I, I'm not proud of the fact that I've done it, but, but I do. Um, yeah. Um, and so you know, I, I try to break away from that, uh, or I find that you know I'll, I'll uh, draw the same kind of head shape or face or whatever over and over. Uh, so I, I, you know, I have like a, a kind of a, a stock of. You know, this is how I draw a head from three quarters facing away from you, uh, and it's kind of the same thing. And and a lot of times I know it's not right or accurate or whatever else, uh, but I do it and it works and it's done. And and sometimes that's enough, but sometimes I got to really like figure out the correct way to solve that problem. Uh, which is you were asking if I do uh, much life drawing, uh, yeah, and I don't, um, especially when I'm on deadline. I. I I did not for a very long time um, because I just didn't have time for that shit. Uh, as much as I really wanted to uh, and knew that I really needed to, mm -hmm. I, I just I just didn't because I didn't have time. Well, um, the figure drawing uh, that you're going to be leading in Paradise is going to be pretty great then. Yeah, right. I'm excited. Uh, and I'm going to try to uh, play with it in, in some ways that are, uh, will make it a little a little different than just a standard kind of straightforward figure drawing class. We get um, some pretty awesome models. Uh, they're, uh, they're, they're great. They will hold any pose that you ask them to do. They're, they're truly awesome. amazing people. They're, they're great models. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really all about getting out of your comfort zone. Like, you know, bite off more than you can chew as often as you can uh, because that's really the only thing that's going to keep you from doing the same shit over and over and over and um, and then and if you feel like it's coming easy then it's time to change your shit because uh, it should never be easy right on oh yeah hey uh, someone wants to know if those are Harry Potter sigils in the background <laughs> yeah they totally are uh, and I got a bunch of owl I got a bunch of owls over here over the uh, over the fireplace my my daughter just turned five last uh, 
last weekend, and she had a Harry Potter themed birthday party. So this was her. This was the Hogwarts school here. We had Harry Potter stuff everywhere in this house. It was you went all out, yeah. right? You just oh, yeah. Harry Potter stuff. All, all, I mean, I, I saw it. I, you know, I follow you, so I, I saw what you posted, and there's some pretty awesome, yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff in there. Now, my my wife really went crazy on the production, which is uh, which is really funny because she it, there's so so few things that really can get her to like throw all in as far as like. Um, Something like this, like you know, like she'll go all out for Christmas, mm-hmm. uh, but does not give a fuck about Halloween. Like, like what? Just doesn't. <laughs> uh, oh man, so I don't know. That's, that's some horseshit. Her, right her her uh, her explanation to me was, well, well, my whole life is Halloween. Like every day. I guess I can't argue with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, but yeah, uh, our daughter like is just eaten up with Harry Potter right now. Um, she's working on the second book uh, right now, and. and just loves the hell out of Harry Potter shit, and for her fifth birthday, she wanted a Harry Potter party, so we did. Uh, my wife made Hogwarts robes out of like oversized T-shirts, uh, like adult T-shirts, and put little patches on them, and all the kids made magic wands for all the kids, and I mean, she just went buck wild with it, and uh, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's so, that's so awesome. Um, yeah, it was definitely uh, like a. She just raided Pinterest basically for every <laughs> e- every single idea that you could come up with, and just did them all. So, um, the sketches that you do, your daily drawings and whatnot. Uh, if someone was looking to buy them, uh, where would they go to get these? Uh, my website is tonymoreillustration.com. dot uh, com. You can Google Tony Moore. I think I'm the first one. Um, and uh, and then yeah, you just click over to the store and uh, find original art, and they're all in there. Right on, man. Um, someone's asking if uh, Tony, can you post more videos on your YouTube channel? Maybe some drawing videos, etc. I think I've watched the same three a dozen times. <laughs> yeah, because I only have three. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I want to do a lot more, actually. Uh, like you were saying, some tutorials and stuff. Uh, you know, I, w- I want to do some like in-depth tutorials that would be, you know, like pay downloads. But I also would like to have some like, you know, just kind of like smaller kind of like, here's how to, you know, here's a little trick that you might find useful kind of videos uh, for YouTube and stuff like that. Or, you know, here's here's kind of the process of me pulling some screen prints and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, whatever. Well, if you, if you need any tips for streaming video, uh, let me know. I'm glad to help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, and I, I want to do some more, like, um, I want to do this type of thing where it's, you know, or whether it's in uh, this or Google Hangouts or whatever where people can kind of interact and watch and stuff like that. I'm, I'm hoping to do a lot more of that soon. Um, I got a GoPro that I'm oh, hoping great. to get operational before too long uh, I got it like two Christmases ago and I still haven't taken it out of the box <laughs> the, the the video that you can get from that little tiny camera is just amazing um, yeah the um, any of the behind the scenes video if you if you find the the stuff that I did with that Rob Zombie project for Ubisoft like all the behind the scenes stuff the the producer came out and shot it all at my house with a GoPro and I was astounded at what he got out of it yeah, um, it's it's tiny. You know, it's the size of you know. Yeah, a, I couldn't get over a it. A few fig newtons. <laughs> How many fig newtons? A few, a few, a few. Maybe That's, maybe six. I probably say like two. two. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a little it's a little they're, deeper than you might they're think. They're bigger nowadays. Uh, I, the I, newtons. I, I, I hate them. I like them. It's like a couple boxes of candy cigarettes. <laughs> ah. It's like two boxes yeah. of Tic Tacs. There you go. With a mm, round. I don't know. So it's like one GoPro. <laughs> with a round peppermint candy for a It's lens. about the size of a GoPro camera. Have you seen this? <laughs> it's almost exactly the same size as a GoPro. It's awesome. Have you seen those GoPros? <laughs> uh, Sorry. I'm t- <laughs> hey, so, so, check this out. Is what this is that? Iron Maiden. Oh, man. Is, a, is that the truth? Yeah. Tr- yes. Tr- Maiden beer. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed it quite a bit here. I'd, it's... Uh, it's 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 like an IPA, but it's a little more balanced. Like it doesn't just uh, doesn't punch you in the face with hops. It doesn't like get up its own ass with being hoppy, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, getting so tired of that, like super crazy ass hop stuff that all the kids are drinking these days. 
Oh, I know. They look at you like a jackass because you think it, oh, it's fucking bitter. It yeah. doesn't really taste that great. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you just don't like beer. So, I do. I just don't like feeling like I just ate a fucking banana peel or something. It's, <laughs> exactly. Like, it, it tastes kind of gross. Like, yeah. Right. How about just make one that tastes good? Right. I don't disguise. need to be challenged with my beer. It's like I don't need to be like, what? How much hops is in there? I don't. I don't need that. Yeah. You can't handle all the hops. I don't want them. I just want to enjoy my goddamn to. beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it is now. Sorry, got all crotchety for a minute. I like dark beers. That's, right. That's what I do. Yeah. It's a ruined everything. <laughs> um, so we got a couple more questions from the chat room, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Um. I've really enjoyed talking to you so far, and uh, yeah, this has been, this has been um, a blast. I'm hoping to record some live stuff. I mean, some interviewed stuff uh, at the artist retreat too. And uh, you're welcome back anytime. So uh, anyone, yeah. anyone who isn't getting their questions answered tonight, um, make sure you tune back in. We'll have Tony back. Um, Frank, all right. Uh, we've got another one from uh, Kendall Swafford here. Uh, do you have any more work coming up for DC? They would love to see you work on some Batman. Uh, you know, I've, uh, I've I've tried to stay in pretty regular contact. Uh, the guy who's the head editor of Batman right now was actually the assistant editor on that Vertigo book, The Exterminators. They got canceled. They got canceled? Uh, oh, all right. Straight yeah, too. but I was like, long, no, it was a long time ago, <laughs> and uh, uh, he, uh, you know, I was thrilled to see Mark kind of rise through the ranks over there, and uh, he's, he's always been really good to me. And uh, I love working with him. I loved working with him on that book, and I I, I would be happy to work with him at, at any point. Um, and so he's been he's been really good about staying in touch. And um, I, I've tried to be equally uh, responsive. And uh, so hopefully hopefully we'll get some more stuff going at DC. Uh, I, I love doing covers, and I'm hoping to kind of continue that arena. Um, I like doing covers because it's the one page of a comic book that I can just work on until I feel like it's done. Uh, versus all the ones on the inside, I just have to go. Okay, this just has to be done enough and uh, and let it go. But a comic, I can like make it what I want it to be, and uh, uh, so I love doing cover stuff as often as I can. So I'm hoping to do a lot more with those guys. Um, I've had a few few great projects that they've offered me that the timing just wasn't right for, and it broke my heart to say no. Um, so hopefully, you know, there won't be so many of those. Thankfully, you're in a place where you can say no to DC and still be okay with it. You know, I mean, it, it could be worse. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to you know not be you know completely hand to mouth as far as the you know where the paychecks come in, but uh, uh, it it does break my heart every time you know uh, some dream project that I've really lusted after for a long time finally gets presented to me, and I j there's just no way to make it work. Uh, either the turnaround's too tight, or I know I'm going to be out of town during part of it, or whatever else. Something is going to like throw a monkey wrench into the plans of it, and I have to say no, and it it kills me every time. So the uh, the same Kendall uh, in the chat room. Thanks for asking all these questions, Kendall. Um, <laughs> the monthly grind of comic book deadlines seems to be the death of many a great artist. Uh, is there a solution? Uh, do you, how do you find your balance between a monthly deadline and still producing quality work? I, I don't know that there is. Uh, I mean, there's some guys who are just super soldiers who are built for it. Um, uh, I can think of a handful, you know, guys like Chris Somney or um, uh, Mike Norton or, you know, Mike Hawthorne who's on Deadpool. These guys are like machines and they, they can just keep it rolling and they don't sacrifice quality and, and they're just beasts. Uh, I person I'm a sprint runner. I'm not a marathon runner uh, <laughs> when it comes to to comics. I'm I'm not an actual runner at all. Um, but <laughs> these, uh, um, yeah, it, it it's I mean like a six week turnaround on a book for me is the best I can handle. And if I do six issues of that, then that's taken up most of a year. Mm -hmm. And then by the time that's done, like I just I'm ready to fall over in a, I'm just ready to be dead. Like it, it like it just sucks the life out of me. It like I'm completely run aground uh, by the end of that. Um, so you know, at at most I'm good for like six to eight issues of comics a year, um, and that's that's all I've got. 
in me. Like I just can't do more than that. And you know, a lot of times those lead, that leads to some regrettable pages where I wish I had a, you know a little more extra time to give it that love that you know would have maybe sent that one over the top or whatever. And it's hard to look at guys like uh, you know you read some like European comics like uh, go pick up an issue of like Black Sad or something like that. Uh, where uh, Guarnido is watercoloring every page and it's Beautiful. been drawn impeccably. And that guy didn't have some editor uh, looming over his shoulder saying, hey, get this fucking thing done or we're going to give away five of your pages to some you know greenhorn kid in, in Brazil or whatever. <laughs> like, it's just not going to happen <laughs> to that guy. Uh, and so... Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the answer to that is, honestly. But uh, uh, you know, I mean, that's part of why uh, I haven't been drawing like mainstream deadline stuff in, you know, the last like year or so. Uh, mm -hmm. Is just because it takes such a toll on me personally and on my family life and uh, you know my relationships with my wife and kid. Like it just, uh, it it just takes up so much energy. Um, that I feel like if I'm going to invest that kind of time and energy and stuff like that, I should, I should be investing that into my own thing, uh, whether it's my own creator, own comics, or uh, whatever kind of art project or whatever else. Or it is making I'm working a really on. awesome, you know, Harry Potter five-year birthday party with your wife, you know, for your child. Right. And you only go this way one time, and that's that stuff is is way more important than trying to appease some. Uh, overlord that's trying to make you produce you know mm -hmm. you're better off making yeah. less money and having a better life than making a bunch of money and being fucking miserable all the time well yeah it's that thing like uh i mean you got to put a price tag on your happiness and uh at some point you when when you're working for a living like when are you actually living and not just working absolutely uh, you know i've known some guys that uh you know work their asses off and then literally uh i mean you know, died before they got a chance to kick back and enjoy it. Right. And, uh, and that's a nightmare. That, like, like that, fuck that. That is like one of the most terrifying <laughs> scenarios I can think of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that 100%. You know, it's, it, you, you got to do what you love. And if you don't, what the fuck is the point? You know, it, yeah. There's no point. Exactly. I guess, I mean, that's why we're all doing this. Yeah. Well, hey, Tony, it's been great talking with you, man. Um, oh, no, thanks for having me, man. This I would love awesome. to have you back sometime. Um, the chat room seems to love you, too, which is great. Uh, yeah. I'm glad that they've had questions. Thank you, chat room. Um, I will see you in New Mexico. Awesome. I'm uh, excited. Yeah, Frank? I'll be there, too. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, great honor. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, thank you, man. I look forward to, to spending actual time. Yeah, 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 yeah. that'll be great. <laughs> And uh, I'm actually looking forward to your wife's uh, seminar, too, because we could all use a little bit of business advice, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I mean, God, I'm not worth a shit at it, so I'm glad she is. <laughs> right on, man. Cool. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. It's been great chatting with you. You too, man. Cheers. All right, man. See you I'm soon. Doing. All right, everybody. That was Tony Moore. Uh, we will be back. Just after this, with the Tattoo Now Network News and Tattoo of the Day, uh, thank you for sticking with us on this over 90-minute episode so far. Um, I could have cut it short, but there's no way I wanted to because Tony's been great. Um, so we'll be back after this commercial with Rebecca Hanlon and Tattoo Now Network News and Tattoo of the Day. We'll be right back. Thank you.
We're at a really pivotal point right now where we can all make a, a leap forward. In the modern age, uh, that's where the floodgates of tattooing has opened up. And every young kid wants to be grow up and be a tattooer. You limit yourself and think, oh, I can't afford that, or I'm not good enough, or just sort of be introspective about the ways that your fears and your insecurities get triggered. Um, there's a lot of talent coming in, and if you want to make money, and if you want to be a part of, and if you want the respect of your comrades in this industry, you have to do everything you can do to grow. And no singular movement in the industry is more powerful at taking this creative energy and pushing it towards growth than Tattoo Now, Paradise Artist Retreats, and if you're not coming to these things, you're getting left behind. That's all there is to it. I can feel it elevating me to another place, another level of understanding. I keep thinking the word retreat. It is a an artist retreat and just by definition of the word to retreat or pull back from the front lines of your life and everything that you're doing the busyness and and to literally calm myself I really love being around serious artists and the artists that are here are all of them serious artists and so when you get a hundred serious artists together, it creates a special kind of energy. I'm so honored to uh, be invited and um, such incredible people and such a high caliber of artists that are here because you've got people that are practicing their art every day. I'm so busy all the time and I do work every day and I paint as much as I can at home, but to be in a space with other people doing it, um, in a, in a, in a place that's beautiful like this. Painters get inspired, artists get inspired. Yeah, if you don't do anything else in the year, then just go to one of these events, it's just amazing. Letting all these creative juices just flow together, and uh, it's awesome, I, I've never, experience anything like this, it's, uh, it gives me hope for the future. Whenever you're surrounded by this much talent, and, and productive talent, like people who are taking their talent and making lots of artwork, um, you, you bring inspiration and ideas. Working with all these great artists, you feed off them, and you feed off the energy. In just four days of being here, I find myself being able to apply different, different artists' techniques. I feel super honored to be here participating in the retreat amongst the, the world's greatest. Everyone is putting out amazing work. I, if I had the money, I would buy everything on the floor. And as being visual people like we are, artists, all you have to do is see it. You know, you see what someone else is doing and it affects you. So, I mean, no price is too much for to go home change. You need to be here. Come join us. From Tattoo Now World Headquarters in East Hampton, Massachusetts, this is Tattoo Now Network News with Rebecca Hanley. Hey, everybody. Rebecca here. I'm excited to have you all back. Thanks for sticking around. We just had a great talk with Tony Moore and Phil Robertson and Frank Reddy. A bunch of great people in the studio tonight. Um, I have some great news to share with you guys. The Abbott Aitchison webinar is now available. This is like seriously exciting. This is something that we filmed back, filmed back in October in East Hampton. Um, both of the guys came out. We had two days of tattooing. They did an amazing job um, hammering out a leg sleeve for fellow tattooer Brian Geckel. And we're just super excited to share it with you guys. Um, there's three camera shoot, high definition, 
You are like right up there with the needle. It's looking great. I'm super impressed. And I really hope that all of you enjoy it. So hop on to tattoonow.com slash professional dash development and buy this webinar because it's awesome and you're going to love it and your friends are going to love it. And yeah, enjoy and thank us later. Next up, there are all sorts of exciting events. You have hopefully heard about Paradise Artist Retreat already. Um, and that is coming up in just a couple weeks in um, New Mexico. And literally there is only like one handful of tickets left. So I hope that you are going to be one of the people that snags the last ones because this is going to be a killer event with some of the best artists around. And I hope to see you there. Are you ready? I'm ready. I don't know. I mean, I hope you can come unplug with us. And if not, that sucks. But we have a live webcast ticket that you can get, a live streaming ticket. Um, so even if you are, you know, at home because you're a parent, like some of our friends on the show tonight, you can buy the ticket and, and still be involved in the action. So we hope to see your name pop up on that list if we don't see you there live. Next up, the Worldwide Tattoo Conference in Portland is right around, maybe not right around the corner, but it's coming up and people are like really buying tickets for it. So buy your ticket. Be there. Why not? Portland's a great place. I had a great time there. You know, why not bring some tattoos there? Um, so I was going to talk about um, our new artist member, Luca Pagan. Um, he is a recent addition to the Tattoo Now artist member family, and he's been doing some killer black and gray tattoos out of Rising Phoenix Tattoo Company in the Bronx. Hop on. Check him out. He's doing some cool stuff. Maybe you want to get an appointment with him. I think that'd be a great idea. So we're happy to help link you with these tattoo artists. That's what we're here for. So have fun finding your, you know, tattoo life mate. All right, so another cool part about the Tattoo Now website is classified stuff. So our friends over at Sanctuary Tattoo in Portland, Maine are hiring. And we know that because they submitted a classified on our website, and that's great. So they're looking for a killer tattooer, and that could be you. And they are still hiring. They are looking for people to submit their portfolios, so you should email um, inquiry at sanctuarytattoo.com and see what happens. Hopefully, you know, if you're looking for a job and you want to move to Maine, you get it. Good luck. Um, some other stuff going on at Tattoo Now is our website production. So we are currently developing a whole bunch of new websites. Um, a couple that you can look out for are for Rebel Muse Tattoo Studio out of Louisville, Texas and Forever Art Studio out of Corpus Christi, Texas. All sorts of cool stuff going on down there. And something for our friend Ben Rusher over at Twisted Anchor Tattoo, a friend of Matt Sebley, um, down in Mississippi. So you can, you know, stay tuned because we're about to launch those, you know, in the coming weeks. So enjoy. And if you're looking for a website, give us a call. Maybe not right now because we're live. And if you were to call us, then the phone would ring, and that would be really awkward, and we'd have to, like, edit it out. Um, but <laughs> call me tomorrow. I'll be in the office, and, you know, I want to chat about it. So that's all I have to share with you tonight. Have a great rest of your night. Enjoy. What's Create that? something. I have an exciting segment called the Tattoo of the Day up for you next that I put together a little selection of some of our best tattoos that came through our Tattoo Now website and won our honor of being featured of as the Tattoo of the Day. So enjoy. There's about 12 of them. Have fun. Crack open a beer. Get a snack. So long.
We're back. I hope you enjoyed uh, Tattoo Now Network News with the always awesome Rebecca Hanlon. Thanks. Good job. Sorry I fucked it up. Uh, thanks to Tony Moore, uh, our guest interviewer, Frank Reddy, and our uh, earlier guest, Phil Robertson. Thanks, Phil. Come here. Come here, come here. Thanks. We haven't seen you in a while. No. Well, thank you to How Phil. How about seven, eight years? <laughs> Um, thanks for having me. Thanks for watching, everybody out there. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, all of you guys have a wonderful night. Uh, in two weeks, two weeks, uh, we're going to be <laughs> shipping all this gear to New Mexico. <laughs> and uh, we will not be having a show. But in about a month from now, we're going to have a show with Turk from Left Hand Black, uh, a guest yet to be named. I hope you tune in. Uh, if you cannot... Tune in. Make sure you go to our YouTube channel, tattoonow.com slash YouTube. You can see all of our past episodes, and we are also available as a video podcast on the iTunes store. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, comment, all of that stuff. I hope you uh, really enjoy the show, and if you hate it, let me know. Um, um, all right, man. We're going to the bar. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you from Off the Map Live. See you next time. Are you talking to me? <laughs>